Today we're going to go over tapping some threads into the heater block for the CR10S Pro and Max so you can accept standard MK8 nozzles and get away from those proprietary threads that Creality decided to use on those heat blocks. So let's do this. So originally I had the idea of drilling out the actual heat sink so we can fit a standard Creality heat break in there which has an outer diameter of about seven millimeters. Now the stock hole as you'll see later in the video on this heat sink is about 5.3 to 5.4 millimeters and it's using an M6 by 0.7 thread. This means we can't use a standard heat break in this hot end and it limits our upgrade options in terms of heat breaks and nozzle. Now nozzles are one of the things that we like to be able to swap out on our printers and not being able to swap out with a standard type nozzle is kind of a pain on these machines. Drilling the heat sink out did not work. I actually purchased a separate CR10S Pro hot end to do all these modifications on because our CR10S Pro is active in our print farm making products and prints that need to be done. So drilling it out didn't work. As you can see here, the amount of material that's on the heatsink portion is just too thin. And when I was trying to drill it out, it split. So the alternative is to actually retap part of the block, not the entire length of the block, but retap part of the block where the nozzle and the heat break enter. So we have an M6 by one millimeter thread on the nozzle side. And on the other side, the Creality M6 by 0.7 threading that they use on this particular printer. Now, why they decide to use this, I'm not sure. The only thing I could think of would be trying to lock you into purchasing nozzles from them. But so far, the only nozzles from Creality for this machine are 0.4 millimeter brass nozzles. So if you want to go to a larger diameter or a different material like steel or copper or any other nozzle type, they haven't even put those out to market. So I'm honestly not sure why they went with the finer thread pitch on this particular hot end. But the reality is they do and it's kind of annoying because you have limited options on your nozzles. So I had recorded this entire video of me drilling this out and the first size I went to, which was about 6.8 millimeters in diameter for the bit I was using, went fine. But then when I went to step it up because the heat break still wouldn't fit in, this sheared off. So drilling this out is not an option and I want to make sure that that's clear. Learn from my mistake here. Don't drill it out. So the alternative is modifying the heater block and that's what I'm gonna show you guys right now. To do this, you're gonna need an M6 by one millimeter tap to actually put the threads into the block. I've actually put a link in the video description for a M6 by one millimeter tap so you can actually add these threads and they're under $20, which I think is a good buy to be able to then use whatever MK8 nozzles you want in this particular printer. In the video, I am using a different set that I have here, which is part of a larger set from GearWrench but any M6 by one millimeter tap will work and we're literally only tapping about five millimeters into the block. So even if you get a lower end one, as long as you can use it once, it's gonna do the job. So let's get into the video where I'm showing where to tap it and then we're gonna go and talk about the threading and get some close up shots of the actual threads of the MK8 nozzle and Creality's proprietary CR10S Pro MK8 nozzle. The alternative now would be to tap the heat block to a standard threading on the nozzle side. So you can see I've got my heat break in here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the nozzle. Now this is an M6 thread. Hopefully I have enough meat inside there to re-tap. So let me go ahead and get the heat break out. And let me get my tap and die. All right, so these are both M6. We only wanna go in a certain amount. And if you see here on the tap, our threads don't really start until we get up here. So I'm gonna go in just as far as I need for the nozzle here. All right, so let's see how this came out. We do need to go a little farther in. Okay, I'm starting to get resistance, so I'm gonna do two more turns here. And now we're gonna back it out. So let me make sure that my heat break still goes in. It does, and it's stopping. And that depth seems to be pretty good. 
Yeah, because if I go any further, it's now hitting the new threads. So let me grab a regular nozzle. Okay, so I have a standard MK8 nozzle here. I'm gonna see if this threads in. And it does. Let's see if it busts the threads. Ooh, it doesn't. Okay. So the question is, can we tighten this down against the heat break without the threads we just tapped basically eating themselves? Ooh. That actually worked. That's solid. This is solid. So, TLDR is, get yourself M6 by one millimeter tap here. Tap about halfway in, so I went about right there. So I cut new threads for the nozzle here, so we can take a standard size nozzle. We don't have to mess with this. This is clearly too thin to be able to drill it out to fit the standard size heat break. Why they did this, I have no idea. There's really no benefits of doing this. They could have made that center portion thicker and used the same heat breaks they've been using. But who knows, it's Creality. I will say, when you are replacing nozzles, be a little gentler with this because these are threads that were tapped in the path of another set of threads. But I can tell you right now, this feels really good. And if I want to tighten this anymore, I'm getting a lot of force. So they aren't just shearing off, which is good. Due to how Creality designed this, this internal shaft here is actually too thin. And when I went to go to the next step up on the drill bit, it just snapped off. So do not try to drill this out. This will not work. What does work is tapping new threads into the heater block where the nozzle goes. So I've retained the M6 by, I believe this is 0.7 millimeter thread pitch for the heat break and retapped M6 by one millimeter, which is what your standard nozzles use. So now if we look here, here's the CR-10S Pro slash Max. They both use the same hot end. This is the nozzle that comes in those. This is the nozzle that your standard Creality's use. If you look, they're the exact same depth. Everything on the nozzle is the same except for the fact that they change the threading so you have to buy nozzles from them. This is an M6 by one millimeter thread pitch. This is an M6 by 0.7 millimeter. So it's just a slight difference, but enough where your standard MK8 nozzles that are available from us and many other retailers do not fit. For re-tapping them, you can see here, I now have the M6 by one millimeter threads in here. And my concern was that since we're literally re-tapping threads that were already existing, that they wouldn't be strong enough, but it appears that since the other threads were so fine, we do have enough meat to get a nice smooth thread in here. And we're able to tighten the heat break against the nozzle. So I put the heat break in, a little bit too shallow. So you don't want to have this flush, so right about there. So you can see there, it's hitting the nozzle. Now I can tighten this nozzle up against the heat break and this nozzle will function just like the original Creality one, except these are readily available and much cheaper than these ones that they use the non-standard threading on. Hopefully this helps you guys out. The easiest way is gonna be retapping half of the threads on here. So you can still use the factory heat break, but you can now use MK8 nozzles. So if we look closer here, we have our M6 by one millimeter pitch threads here for the nozzle on the bottom side of the block, which is where the grub screw is. And then on the upper side, we still have our M6 by 0.7, which is what the heat break uses. So we can still thread the factory heat break in just fine. And we can thread in a standard MK8 nozzle. So when you guys are reassembling, you wanna leave this out. You got about that much of a gap, put your heat break in. You see, and then you're gonna wanna hot tighten this at about 240 C. But you can see here that even just finger tightening, I've got no wobble on the heat break. I've got no wobble on the nozzle. And these threads seem to be pretty solid. So hopefully this helps somebody out if you got one of these proprietary heater blocks. And uh, don't drill yours out because this is what happens. They made the outer wall here so thin. And if you look here, it's actually thicker right here. And then it transitions to a thinner zone. Now, just eyeballing, I did not measure this, obviously. I thought I was gonna have enough extra metal on the heatsink here to be able to go to a larger size. But 
the first bit went in fine, but then when I put the second one in, it just sheared this off. So I've sacrificed a hot end for you guys in the name of science, but hopefully this helps somebody out who has these hot ends that take these weird threadings that Creality forces you to buy their own nozzles. Hopefully this shows you guys how to convert this. You can take standard MK8 nozzles on your CR10S Pro, and I'll put a link to a cheap tap and die set in the description. You can get them for about 12 bucks for one that'll do the M6 by one threads. So you can add your new threads into your heat block. Just be aware that you need to go slow, take your time and don't over tighten this because these threads are not gonna be as strong as the ones in like the standard blocks where they're M6 by one normally. But for a workaround, I'm gonna go and do this to our CR10S Pro so we can stop using Creality's proprietary nozzles. And that's all there is to it. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and you learned from my mistakes. Don't try to drill that heat sink out because there's just not enough extra material on there to actually expand the hole. Now that I've got the M6 by one millimeter thread pitch on the block, I can go ahead and use any standard MK8 nozzle on my CR10S Pro. And this will also work for the CR10S Max since it's the same exact hot end. Just be aware that you are tapping threads into an existing set of threads, which is not going to be as strong as a block that just had M6 by ones. But as long as you take your time and you don't over tighten your nozzle, I don't see why you would have any issues in the future. And with all of our little tutorials, is there a do at your own risk kind of thing? And I'm just sharing some information that I felt was helpful. So that way you can get away from the limited selection that the CR10S Pro has and move on to something that's much wider that takes the MK8 style nozzles. So everybody, I hope you have a good weekend and as always, happy printing.